hills and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to build Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers in association with Lee Spirits and Matty. Hello, I'm Colin. <clears throat> Hi, I'm John. Don't ask me for enthusiastic greetings tonight. Not feeling it at all. Uh, it, it's probably no night for enthusiastic greetings. I'm, I'm actually full of energy because I've just, just off the back of having a big rant to used to about how annoyed I'm about yesterday <laughs> and how I, I can't wait to talk about it. Uh, and I actually feel, I, I don't know, like a totally different mood now because I feel happy that I'm getting to get it all off my chest. Um, it's a long time, mate. Imagine if I'd done it last night, Saturday night. Hey, like, it, would have been a, it might have been a bit different Aye. Um, altogether, eh? Well, normally, I think after I've slept on a result, so I, I quite often I'll be annoyed coming out the ground and trying my best not to do like the knee jerk reaction, right? Which isn't always easy because you know, we're all supporters and you kind of have that emotional investment in the game, don't you? And then I sleep on it, and the time I go up the next day, I tend to have calmed down and kind of put it into perspective. But I think I was still awake looking at Hibsnet and the bounce last night at half two, three o'clock. Uh, and then I got up this morning, and it was the first thing I was thinking about was. I'm still annoyed about that, and I have. I've been annoyed all day. So, um, before we start, I want to say I have a quick apology. Uh, I bumped into a guy coming out of the toilets at the West Stand yesterday, right at half time. No, like I wasn't hanging around the toilets, I got in for a piss at half time. And uh, just as, as I was coming out the toilet, he turned around and we almost banged into each other. And he says, uh, He says, Oh, hi, I really like the podcast, uh, we watch it uh, for South Africa. And I was like, kind of just a, a wee bit taken aback. I never stopped to think, kind of, to say, oh, what's your name, mate? Or like, do the pleasantries or anything. I was just like, oh, th thanks very much. And kind of wandered off. So apologies if that was a wee bit a wee bit rude if you are watching it. Um, thanks for uh, saying hello. And make yourself known if you're, if you're on Twitter or whatever, get in touch and I'll, I'll say hello properly. Um, and and can, I, can I say happy 18th to my mate, Tony son, Luca, who was 18 at the weekend. And that's why we never recorded last night. But also because Barry didn't read his fucking... Message oh, you at half time, so um, not not impressed by that. But uh, happy birthday, anyway. Uh, John, is there anything you'd like to share with us before we get going? <laughs> I, I don't know. I've had a pretty quiet weekend looking at DNS servers and taking a bit of uh, soft play and fanning about with the slow cooker. So, all right. No, no. Maybe maybe the guys at Murphy Richards. Good job. <laughs> okay, okay. I immediately regretted asking that question. Um, right, let's uh, let's get into the nuts and bolts of the defeat to St. Johnson yesterday. Uh, we'll start with the team lineup. Um, so we had Marshall and goals, we had Fish, Boyle, um, Newell, Cadden, uh, Mizian, Lafondre, Emiliano, Abita, Chantis, and Rocky, I suppose the notable one there, John, was Boyle coming straight back in at the expense of Yuan. What were mm. your thoughts on the lineup when you saw it? I'd be a bit surprised by Boyle coming straight back in. He got his, I think, because probably because in recent weeks you've had quite a bit made, and and, and we've talked about it as well about uh, Yuan's goal, like his the goals that he scored, but also the number of uh, goals that he's been involved in, uh, and we. The thing that we talked about around that was whether his goal contribution outweighed like the defensive lapses. Mm -hmm. So to actually see Boyle come back in, it was I, I wouldn't I'm not I wasn't totally against it. It was just a wee bit of a surprise because I think in Boyle's absence, Yuan's continued to chalk up numbers. So it was a wee bit of an eyebrow raiser, but not not you know it wasn't not massively surprising. Mm. I I agree with you, John. Totally agree. Uh, uh, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't massively surprised, but I was a was disappointed. The right word. I thought Yuan would have kept his place, um, but I, I wasn't massively surprised he came in. Might have been another tweak somewhere else that could have made to ha to let it happen. But yeah. What What about um, Jan is keeping his spot at the expense of Mariah Welsh coming back into the team? Go on. I, I wasn't surprised at that, but then based on the second half difference, then I think. I would be surprised in the future. Yeah, I think aye, there's a bit of <clears throat> 2020 hindsight or 20, aye, 2020 hindsight with uh, Triantis and, and what happened throughout the game. But you never looked at it and went, or at least I, I certainly never looked at it and went, that's a massive weakness in midfield or on the pitch. 
I think um, it's all on my way into the ground. I bumped into uh, Raymond and Dave, who, who we both know or all know. Um, and that was probably the one that they called out uh, to, to just show that there's no all like hindsight here. There was like a, a couple of folks said in advance of the match saying that Mariah Welsh's energy was, was probably something that we could have benefited from uh, against St. Johnson as you're trying to. Uh, break them down. However, I I agree. Don't think it was necessarily a surprise though, because Chantis has done well in that that midfield spot since he's uh, he's been in it. Um, onto the the match itself. So we'll have a wee look through the the sort of the key incidents in a second. Um, what we'll do in the in the meantime is just get your thoughts on uh, pretty much the the state of the game overall. So, John, if I, if I come to you first, what, what was your overriding feeling about the uh, the game? I was that fucked off throughout the game that I think I only bothered with one alternative Hibs commentary tweet because <laughs> it was just <laughs> like don't get me wrong, like the there was a couple moments there of promise and St Johnston keepers made a good save. So I think I'd made a comment about how the football could be quite simple and I thought that the with the wind being kind of like behind us and to the left in the second half, I thought that we might get more out of uh, a beater in an attacking sense because I think he was pretty much nullified first half. Like, I don't think, or at least I don't remember him getting any balls in, but then there was that one cross that he swung in for, and I think it's Marcondes has got maybe a left foot of sort of half volume, a left foot strike anyway, and the keeper's pulled off a really good save, kind of like reaction save, tipped off the, over the bar and that kind of stuff. But the thing that I was majorly fucked off about was simple, simple things like just simple passes, like simple ball control, um, closing down players, not having awareness of where the opposition players are around you. Uh, Hibs were doing, I think Hibs were doing fine first half, like the way that I saw the first half was St Johnston versus St Johnston packed into their own half and Hibs were trying to get uh, bodies into the box, uh, sorry, bodies into the, uh, the opposition half, trying to make things happen. And then you have the sucker punch with, uh, oh, I forget uh, the St. Johnston player's name, but Joe Newell makes a mistake. One pass, their third player through on goal, goal. Uh, it was just so, and I think we've 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 talked a lot about typical Hibs goals and the you know the typical Hibs goals that we can see like that has become, like it's become a parody itself. It was just, <laughs> and I think. I mean, both both the goals, but I'm yeah. just I both the goals, but I'm I'm thinking about the first one because it's it's really clear in my mind. Yeah. Uh, I just That's I think because you see it back. I watched that I, back earlier, just an hour ago. Back in here. Yeah. I think because I come on because I come up to this, like Matt, you were talking about bumping it and the folk at the ground and you know what they'd be saying to you and uh, you know asking you what you would be talking about on Like I think I come across as the the optimist, or I am the optimist out of the, the three of us. And I think I saw a comment yesterday. It was Pete Preston, a listener, saying like, "Surely John doesn't have any optimism." No, I fucking don't. Like, I, am, <laughs> I am at the end of my tether because we we talked we we had those episodes where we talked about like the points that we we saw us getting in the remaining three games before the split and how that would set us up. So it wasn't it like there's a lot being made about the the top six finish, but it's no it's no top six, Matty. I think we talked about it previously where it's about it's that like short term goal. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, then stretch objectives, that sort of stuff. I forget exact phraseology that you used. But to now be in a situation where we're like, fuck, we hope Dundee get beat and we hope, well, well we need to beat Motherwell and other results need to go away. You're kind of like, really? Yeah. It's fucking farcical, John, yeah. to, to be in that, that position. I, I totally agree with you. Um, Colin, what, what were you? What were your, your thoughts on the, the game? So I thought the game was shite. Like the first half, I was speaking to a few boys at half time. So, um, Jeff's cake, Jeff Ashton, listen, I brought some cake. It was magic. Mm-hmm. Eat, they, they mentioned there in the deej, uh, at half time, and it was fuck it. First half was shite. Like I think I, I don't. I've not looked at the stats, and I've not really looked at back. I can't really remember any attempts on goal in the first half. It was just shit. Um, and then the second half. Didn't get much better. Oh, albeit maybe twenty minutes, we were all right. Mm-hmm. Like they, they scored, and then I think uh, Mariah Welsh and that made a difference at the half time subs. Um, it's fucking tiring. It's just shit. Like, it, it, and I, I was surprised at this. I was just surprised. 
the the seventy one percent possession that Montgomery mentioned, Aye. and then I've seen it come up in the sports scene stats when I watched it a few while ago. But we weren't doing anything with it. Like it wasn't like you were going all oh, dominated that game. Like you watched the sports scene highlights. Carol wasn't at the game yesterday. She watched the highlights. I mean, like we're over them, but not really. I think it's just that the, the notable incidents. There was like Aye. for me two saves, and but other than that, it wasn't like when you watch the whole ninety, you go. And it was dominant, like they were lucky to get away with two more they weren't they? It, it reminded me a wee bit of uh, the Samaritan game at the start of the season where we went behind, like we were shy for ages and then we had a wee spell for 20 minutes where we were really good. Yeah. We got a couple of goals in that game uh, and then still went on to lose. And th- this one was the same, like we would fall behind to a fucking basic, 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 basic goal. Um, I would say it was total amateur hour. I don't know if, if either of you watched Match of the Day last night and did you see uh, Crystal Palace's first goal against Man City? It was almost exactly the same. I was like, well, fucking, are we being harsh? Yeah. Like, if Man City lose a goal like that, can hips do it? But um, I, don't know, I think I was, I was, I think where, where Man City lost the ball was, was half the halfway line as opposed to on the edge of there. Um, I'm sure we'll get to it. But see, I've watched that. I've watched that back just, just an hour ago um, before this. And I knew he'll give the ball away, but he's actually gave the ball away like, on the edge of the like, on the yeah, yeah. And and all they've done was kick it along. And Rocky's not paying attention. And Park knows what Triantis is doing. <laughs> and then when you watch Triantis running back, you go, Oh I'll fucking run past them. Mm. Like it's like he's like running a lion's on a chasing stand. Aye. Oh. And you go, Come on, fuck, is that as fast as you can run? Like it's fucking sh- it's dreadful. Well, he Come finished on. it well, and he was definitely on side because Triantis played him on, despite the reason that they were so high as he's trying to play him off. He's fucking... He played him on and, and they put the lines on it, and you go, he didn't even need the line. Aye. You can see he's played him on, like, a, a good half a yard, yard, like, without the lines. It was fucking awful. Awful. It was so frustrating. The thing, the thing that <clears throat> fucked me off the most about it was we needed to win. Like, we we all knew the score uh, going into the game, uh, as in you know, the situation, know the result. Um, Montgomery on Monday night when he was speaking to folk at Easter Road was talking about the importance of winning the game and how they knew what was at stake. And somebody should have told the fucking players because, <laughs> like, n- none of them looked like they had that urgency. They kind of like the conditions weren't really great. If you wanted to try and look for excuses, but the conditions were the same for both teams. And, I think. Uh, I, I thought that the conditions, so I mentioned a bit of uh, first half, I thought that maybe because of the, the way that the wind was coming through from the away end and the west end, like that seemed to be like a real problem here, and I thought that was maybe affecting him on the other side of the pitch, which was why I suggested that I thought he might get more joy in the second half, but there was no issue for St Johnston with their two goals, like the wind didn't affect them whatsoever, so... I'm not even like it was an observation at the time, but it's certainly not an excuse and it's no justification. It's absolute bullshit. Yeah. Uh, right. What we'll, we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the key incidents and just talk through. So I think we've got a penalty shout and uh, a couple of goals to uh, to look at. So just let me uh, bring that up. So that this uh, this first incident that we've got here uh, on the screen is the is the penalty shout. Um, well, you're thinking, Colin here. But at the game, so I'm at the I'm in the east stand, right? Away along at the other end, uh, uh-huh. the famous five end. And I thought the goalie had maybe got to it first. So I thought it was similar to the Marshall um the Aberdeen one. Uh-huh. But having seen it back, which is obviously what they, they get to see it back because that's what fucking DR is. I'm going yep. to the fuck's that not a penalty because not only did McCondy get to the ball first, the goalie never touched it, punched him in the face and fucking was... stuck his knee in his ribs. Mm-hmm. I was just going to ask that exact question, uh, Colin. There, as Matty was playing the video, did because it looked to me there, I couldn't tell because of like the the sun, the goalkeeper's gloves, the white and the shot, that kind of thing. But does the keeper make any connection with the ball? Nah, nah I've got to see there's that much. He, he gets it here, um, and McCordy's he gets it, it there. Yeah, knocks it over him. Goalie just smashes him, and then look at the knee. Look at his knee. Yeah, right in his fucking chest, right above his rib. It's like fucking hell. Like the goalie's got to be with murder, but. Right, so I get I get why the referee doesn't give that on well, first viewing. Yeah. But that went that went to VR. So how did they not get it? So how how is it? Uh, the day, the guy glancing the boy's knee on his when he was on the way down. 
<laughs> me did he get one for a goalie stick in the fucking knee and his ribs? That's fucking nuts. Absolutely fucking crazy. We'll just uh, skip it past. There's a wee uh, chance for St. Johnson there, which is fucking insignificant. That, uh, is it Sadibi here? He thought he was quite good for St. Johnson. Quite lively. I think uh, he could probably work for him. Uh, he's all right, yeah. Um, and then there's this chance here for us. Uh, New clips the ball in. Well, leader takes it to the byline, but fucking none. Can keeper just falls on it? There was loads of like fucking we half chance that we were going to sort of relatively decent positions, and uh, did nothing with it. Uh, I think this is their goal here, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so you didn't see the new losing it there. Nah, new losing it just on the edge of the box, and look at that. It's like one ball. I think how Rocky's playing it. It's like he doesn't care the boys there. Nah. Do you know by my observation um, uh, watching the replay back in that is, is exactly that. Like it's almost like he's not looking at the right direction. This is so. This was uh, my comment earlier with regards to awareness of what was happening around them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So if you remember, there was a was there a substitution just before this or at half time think, where Mariah Welsh comes on for I forget who and Triantis. Oh, it was for Fish. Fish was yeah, apparently ill. But Fish was wasn't well. But, but also not very good. So, mm. uh, but also not very good. Uh, yeah. So if uh, Matty said that it was a, an insignificant chance uh, for St. Johnson previously, but actually it was Will Fish doing what he did at Tynecastle and taking a heavy touch on the ball and finding himself caught in position, which leads to a chance for uh, St. Johnston. My problem, or an additional problem with that goal is, and I don't think I've seen anyone mention it, and, and some of this may be a bit more... Uh, versed and educated in football than me can explain to me why it is that Mariah Welsh checks his run when closing the, uh, the St Johnston player down because to me that kind of leaves the, the pass open in the first place and it, and it and it's not so much, it's not like a, a single failure, it's what's blighted Hibs all season, it's a collection of errors that is compounded from Joe Newell, Mariah Welsh uh, Bashiri and Triantis, like just errors everywhere so you're looking there where he, where he goes to play. I think it's just too far away from John. Looking at it there, yeah. I just think he's he's no got any. Because there's Mar Mariah Welsh goes to engage, but he's not close I enough. Notice that. Aye, goes yeah. to engage, checks himself, goes to engage again, just leaves it. So if he doesn't check that first time, does he make the ball? Does he close the ball down? I don't know. I think he was. I think he was too far away from it. But you could be right. And, and you've got to be looking at the two defenders doing better there. So uh, the Rocky Rocky looks like he switched off and he's not even running full out. And then Triantis isn't is, is he might be on the cover? I don't know because he's just kind of running down the middle like he's he, so, he's like pushing the last fucking five hundred yeah. meters of a five k and he's toiling like fuck. That's what it looks like. The the bit where I lost my train of thought before was regards to like Triantis and how he found himself in defence. Like was there. Is that symptomatic of a breakdown in communication because defences had to change? Is, yeah. is Rocky expecting Fish to be in a different position from Triantis? Like, but, and the reason I ask this, and the reason I point out is that Triantis moving into defence, like we made a, a point at the start of the programme about Triantis in midfield being okay. Mm -hmm. He has been. But in defence this season, he's not been great and he's given away a number of penalties. So is there a communication there that Bashiri and Fish have that Bashiri and Triantis don't? So the, the, you could be on something there, John, because the, the other point to make there is when Triantis did play... In defence, he played on the where Rocky's playing. So neither of them have played together. They've they've always both played with Fish. Right. Um, but I don't I don't think it's like a where they were. I don't think it's an especially unusual position for centre halves to 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 pick up. As we attack and the attack breaks down, I think you need your centre halves to be aware there. But the other thing is they're right in front of the fucking dugout. So if they are out of position, they're in shouting distance for the coaching staff to tell them. I can switch on, or you know, get tighter, or you, you know, drop back, push up, whatever apart, it is. Aye, yeah. The, the, there's folk there that can tell them and guide them on where they should be. Rocky totally misreads the ball. Uh, like you, you see when he's running, he's like, like he doesn't get the pace yet or something. Eh? Aye, like he just doesn't yeah. figure out should I go for this or should I uh, should I stay? Yeah. And it's like he doesn't can that uh, Sadiv is behind him, and by the time he realizes we're we're fucked, like the boys threw on uh, on goal. So whether so whether it's uh, like whether it's a, a missing chance to shout, whether it's a missing shout for the coaching staff, I think that probably adds to my point about a, a catalogue of failures from Joe Newell all the way back until he scored. 
Aye. And Joe, Joe Newell, like, he didn't have a great game on uh, Saturday. You no, know, like, by his his standards, it was pretty awful. And when he, when he lost the ball, he tried to just sort of flick a pass through on the edge of the box to, like, through a crowded space. I think the pass was ever on. And you know when a player tries to do something and they're not quite committed to it? It was one of those, and he just, like, swung his foot and sort of slapped the ball, gave it away, and then next thing you know, we're, uh, we're a goal down. But we did equalise. Um, oh, there's the lines there, Colin. He's, he's well on side. Yeah. Um, we, we did equalise, and Mariah Welsh does brilliant with it. Like, a great run. Feeds it to uh, Mizian on the, the left. He does great. Drives a shot in. Keeper palms it, and then Cadden follows it in. Um, thoughts on the, the goal caller? Uh, no, I think you've described it like that the Maria Welsh makes a difference. Mizzy had done that a few times in the day, he just drifts past guys, he, he doesn't look that quick, but he's he, he goes past guys as if they're not there. And I don't know like if, it, if it's in the brain or whatever it causes it, but um, he, he done that and then he hadn't pulled up well and took his time because the defender obviously could just panic them to smash it. It looks like he's actually taking his time to place it between the defenders. Um, I, no, please, Cadden, Cadden was probably... Who got player of the match at the ground? I don't know. I, don't know. I, can't remember them. I can't remember them announcing it. I don't it. know. I don't know if that was just because everybody was that Aye. off by that point. Yeah. It's bound to have been Cadden. I think Cadden, Mariah Welsh would have been in the mix, Aye. despite only playing the second 45. Um, but Cadden was the only one that really, I thought... And a, and a beater might have been in the mix as well, but you know that's it. You've got two fullbacks and and, and a I substitute so. fielder. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that are actually and Miz, and Miz, yeah, it's okay, but I think we've not got to the second goal yet. Uh, no, we'll we'll uh, bring it forward. So there's a couple of chances for us. But this one where a beat up uh, crosses it in. Oh, that would have been superb. That back heel for Lafondre. Lafondre, sorry, that was the one I was talking about earlier. Aye, yeah. and uh, he got subbed straight away after that as well. I actually thought yeah. Lafondre looked no bad. I reckon why he was to come off at that point, because so, he didn't look like he was blown. No, but uh, it's pre-planned stuff. Like uh, I'd say to him, I, I was at the game with my daughter Grace, and, and she had says because she's what do you think? She's like 3 0, 2, Mizian will get 2, and Lafondre will get 1. I went, Jenny, it's early goals then, because Lafondre will be up at 60 minutes. And it was 64, because I checked, because I thought, fucking hell, I said that before the game. <laughs> like, it, it's like, but I and it was as you say it was straight after that. But other than that, he didn't need to do. It wasn't like you're going. Oh fucking, the laundry's coming off because it wasn't like he'd been banging shots in or creating loads of things. You know what I mean? Uh, other than that, which would have been like goal of the season. Aye. Um, we had to have another pair of shout. I can't what you thought of this one. I thought this was a bit softer. I mean, the first one I thought was a stick on. This one. This could have been given. Yeah. It's just a wee flick in and. Colatch test, John. I was going to ask you about that. Uh, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it's. He's got his shirt. Like he's got his. Like yeah, a, we like didn't a get it. Shirt. We didn't get it because he gets a shot away. Uh, He'd been better not shooting. He might have responded. I did. The shot away doesn't count. Mind that uh, Celtic got the shot away and got I know. Penalty. We're I know, in Celtic, I suppose. Are we're we? in Celtic, right? So if he didn't get the shot away, and we got a corner. I think for that. Mm-hmm. Um, for memory, you, that's why you didn't get it. It's like, and it's mad that you're playing, you're you're trying to play, but that that is the that is how they apply the rules. Like the, that, I'm not saying that's the rule. That's how the rules are applied for Hibs Aye. or Aye. for that, other teams that are near Rangers Celtic or whatever. That like you didn't get it. That's a good summation of what I was trying to say. Like I I don't think it's a penalty, but we can point to various instances this season where and and past seasons where that's been given for. The opposition, so you're just left wondering how you can apply the same rule differently. Aye, there's a wee bit like six and two threes with it, isn't it? Because uh, Mizzy has got his arm across the boy as well, but putting your arm across somebody isn't necessarily a, a foul. You're allowed to sort of use your body to shield it, but pulling a shirt is a foul. But he's, um, he's put so you, you referenced the Cholak test, they yeah. put his hands on so. And that, that's all that's all that Cholak had done to him, a hand on either hip. You've made a decision to make. That's it. Yeah. That's the phrase. Um, and you saw the day, actually, in the old firm game, how little contact you need to warrant a penalty. Um, right, and then St. Johnson get a corner. Obita actually just sliced the ball away, kind of fucked a clearance and sliced it. I think ah, that was the wind. And it it yeah. was like a, a ball into nothing. Can you give away a corner totally 
yeah. needlessly. It was one of those ones. Um, the, the corner comes in. I think it's Gallagher gets the goal. Sort of catches it first time. Um, John, what are your thoughts there? Exasperation. We just so the the thing that I mentioned about you and at the start of the the episode was whether his defensive errors outweighed his goal contributions for Hibs. So my leader, I think, has probably been Hibs' standout of the the January signings. Yeah. But he's also, that's another goal that he's involved in where he's not picked up his marker. Ah, he's, and he's, he is, oh, I don't know what we're doing. I'm going too far back. He, he is on the boy. showed it quite well. I suppose he showed that he's more interested in the man though, he's not looking Aye. at the ball. Um and, and he's trying to win the fight, but he's not looking at the ball. However, right. Why we've got defenders on the pitch. Uh-huh. And they're they're standing no marking anybody. There was a, a, a photograph of it from behind the goals, uh, I can't remember what it was, but I think Chantis was just standing at the penalty spot on his Jack Jones. Huh? And Surely yeah. the centre halves have got to be picking somebody up, and I'm not saying it should be that person because that's a fullback that's got mm-hmm. the goal. But like we've got strikers, or wide wide attacking players, whatever the fuck he was playing at that point, picking up the guy that scores the goal, but your centre half's not marking anybody. Like, what the fuck is going on? Mm-hmm. Two shots uh, on goal. Listen, Johnson had all game, two yeah. goals. First time they've scored two goals in a game since October or something. I heard on the telly earlier. You're just rubbing salt in the wind's calling. I, I said it at the time. I was sitting beside Dave um, Dave Thompson at listens and I was sitting beside him at the game and I said, wait, did you say Johnson has scored two goals in a game? And then sports team told me the answer the night, but I can't <laughs> remember what they said, but it was well before Christmas. They just didn't score two goals in a the game. They, they actually lucky to get fucking one most of the time. And we let them score two. The um the, the thing I think I've been arguing with folk today, right? as I said, like it's been bugging me all all, all pretty much since full time yesterday, right? and you've got this like almost a, an excuse or some mitigation for how we play, right? With Montgomery, he's not had can time to totally sign a new defence, or he's playing with players that that only has January's a difficult window and all the rest. Of it Craig Levine. Came into St Johnson, and I think it was the fifth of November. They were seven points behind us at that point, right? They they were struggling to get fucking goals and wins. I think they've gone on a run, something like four games with uh, scoring or something like that. He's beat us twice since then, Levine. Now, I see if you if you'd said to Craig Levine, do you want the same money that Ebbs had to spend in January? He would have bitten your fucking hand off for it, and it, it's like. You, you can't have it like ignore that a manager is able to do that with a team. St. Johnson is still seven points behind us. They were seven points behind us when they, they, they both took over, or when uh, sorry, Levine took over. So even though we've spent more money on them and everything, we've not been able to open up a gap. They've only won St. Johnson seven games this season. Two of them are against us. Like, it's just is it unacceptable. Is a, so if we're talking about possible mitigating factors, do we have bigger plans than St Johnston that take longer to achieve, like to see the, the fruits of that work, if you like? So one of, one of the things that we talked about the other week was with regards to Derek McInnes and Tom Marnock and how he was able to have a, a third bottom place finish the last season. And I think Colin, you touched on it and said that the expectation levels are different and yeah. like Hibs fans just wouldn't put up with it. So we've got at Hibs... We're trying to do something bigger. We've got the uh, uh, Black Knight investment, all that sort of stuff. We talked about the plans and extra time, blah, yep. blah, blah. The success off the pitch hasn't transferred on the pitch. So although St. Johnson are still with seven points behind us and Craig Levine's come in and he's done a, a decent job, like where, where does St. Johnson find themselves in, say, three to five years' time? Probably still playing with 10 men, 11 men and one half against Hibs, mm-hmm. and you'll still struggle against them unless that investment is significant and allows us to buy the players that we need to properly challenge for third place. Because at the moment, like so one of my one of my complaints yesterday 
a lot has been made of Marcondes. He was uh, Bournemouth, I think he was, uh, it was suggested that he was quite instrumental in getting him into the Premiership. Yeah. And we we were like, oh, fuck, Premiership boys coming up, rubbing our hands, going, he's going to be a massive addition to our squad. Didn't see it yesterday. So, I've not seen it often, actually. Not seen no. it, definitely not often enough. So do we need to be aiming higher than the likes of Marcondes? To improve our squad, like because so, I think as much as so as much as I, I made the point about my leader and like defensive output or whatever, or sorry, defensive effort, and this just might be me talking shite, but I saw a player like we talked about downward trajectories of careers, and that's how my leader found himself at Hibs. And we talked, and sorry, you could compare that with the likes of Marcondes, who finds himself no getting in the team at Bournemouth, and there's maybe been a wee phone call or two there that's found him that's allowed him to come to Hibs but one of them looks like he's got a point to prove and play for Hibs my leader and the other one looks like he's more interested in his fucking man bun and falling about the pitch so what we need is somebody that's going to come in and drag the players up to his level rather than somebody that comes in and falls to the players that are their mm-hmm. level that's yeah. already there and that's what Marcondes is doing whereas my leader is actually dragging the level up because I, I, I think it's actually I, I I just think he's a player that's earning. I've said this a couple of times over the, over the well over the day since the game. He's earning like Rangers money, like Aye. and and yet he he just done tons of performances. He like somebody that we would be paying a couple of grand a week. He's earning ten times that mm-hmm. or more, yeah. and and he's not showing it. He's not, and and I'm doing what he got on at like uh, individuals specifically, individ like one person because <laughs> yesterday wasn't just about that. But he's come in to drag this up a level, and he's not doing it. Yeah. Uh, we need we need somebody that comes in and sets the standards and and drags the others along with them. And, and, well, I'm, we so we I, definitely need that. But but then I, I, maybe it's because I'm on a downer on Montgomery after yesterday as well. But I think the manager's got a part to play in that as well. So John, going back to to your point about do we need to aim higher than Marcondes to beat St Johnson? No, but we need a we need a manager that gets made out of the team. Then Montgomery got out of the team on Saturday, or they got out of the team at Ibrox the week before. My only, you know, like... my only counter to that is that we've been having these conversations as long as we've been doing long buyers, which is almost five years now. Yeah. Different managers, different owners, different personnel, same conversations. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why yesterday I, I was just, I got as fucked off as I did because what's the answer? Like, why does this keep... Why do we keep having these same results and having the same conversations about the same feelings about different people? Well, I think it, my my view on that, Johnny, is so I think we, we spoke about it before, right? And, and the, the need to sort of have consistency in your manager uh, appointments, right? So you get somebody enough time to do it. And I think there's merit in that. But I think if you're repeatedly changing managers, then it, it points to like an underlying problem, which I think we spoke about on was it extra time or was it when we recorded last week? I can't mind. Anyway, right. Well, right you, you, uh, when, when you go, go look at your your uh, your root cause, now, the now mm-hmm. I, I would be asking questions of the whole fucking football department for the recruitment team to find the damn it. Like, um, but we've, and, had, but we've, we've been in this situation before. I know even longer than as long as Longbuyers has been going. It's been uh-huh. for as like I've been, well, I'm forty-one. So even if you go back thirty years, aye, it's so, been happening but, for uh, that long. But it's, so if you look at the time when it was addressed, right? So see when they did a proper, like let's fucking clear everyone and start again. It was uh, after we were relegated under Butcher, and they wiped the, like um, Stubbs came in, uh, Graham Matthew and George Craig and Leanne Dempster. Right, so George Craig was eff- effectively the director of football. Right, he might not have had the same title, but that was what he did to sort of rebuild everything, so that let's fucking start again, build it up, we'll bring in the players, we want to bring a, a, a particular type of player in, they got a, an up-and-coming manager in, in Stubbs, now, folk will argue about how successful Stubbs was, obviously won the Scottish Cup, people were, were uh, on the verge of chasing him for not getting us promoted after, um, was it two or three seasons, whatever it was, um, but that laid the foundations, when, when uh, Stubbs left, he handed over a good squad. So then when Lennon came in, like Lennon Lennon managed to carry on that that uh, crest of wave that Stubbs and George Craig and um Graham Matthew had, had put together 
And it was only really when he lost uh, John McGinn for the midfield, right? And we know how big a player John McGinn was, that the, the, the decline started to happen, but it never really got um, got addressed. But at that point, we also, also saw then a change of owner, and Leanne Dempster left. Uh, George Craig had, had gone uh, a while back. Graham Matthew got, I think if you would call it, scapegoated, but the finger got pointed him for no selling Josh Doig. Um, a summer when we all thought he was going to go and for no giving Jack Cross the centre half that he was crying out for but that, that we then had a period where we never had a director of football so but there's a change there and before uh, Ben Kent so either realised or convinced I can't remember the way around whether he wanted one and was told no uh, by Ron Gordon or Ron Gordon said uh, wanted one and Ben Kent so said no I can't remember which way around it was but until the eventually went actually we do need a director of football in because the football side's a fucking shambles I think what the director of football does. It helps. Now, I'm not saying he does nothing. I'm no, but when I say that, I'm not saying because I don't know he's doing it wrong, because I think he might be doing a great job. I've not educated. And, right. But we need to see it. And I think if you're churning managers, though, there's, something's going wrong. And yeah. you need to have a look and say, right, where, where's the failure point? Is it the manager? Uh, and there could be multiple ones. Is it the, the, the setup underneath them? Is it the recruitment? Is it the standard of training? The equipment we've got, the facilities, what what is it that's causing the fucking problem? That's causing manager after manager after manager to fail. Can I make a, a suggestion as a possible solution? Aye. Or two two possible solutions. One, get Alan Stubbs back. <laughs> or two, really good. give the manager the same amount of time that Alan Stubbs got because Alan Stubbs uh, was in the championship. We had at least three. No, was it two? Two seasons. Two seasons there. Third one. Aye. And we came up with third under Lennon. Like the, the final act that Alan Stubbs had, the reason I mentioned it, it was the, the Scottish Cup. But he wasn't getting out the the championship at the second attempt. Oh, sorry. He, sorry. He he never had a third attempt at it because he decided that was the biggest thing I could ever do in my career at Hibs. But there's a, there's a strong suggestion... And we'll never know, right? So it's, it's, it's hypothetical that the Scottish Cup pretty much kept him in the job because fan, if we'd lost that Scottish Cup, it'd been like a say we'd got we'd lost that final four nine and it'd been a chase in. Stubbs wouldn't have got the right season. Folk would have been hounding him because they were already on his case for well, he left, losing. He left anyway. We I know, but I, I, well, that's I, what I'm saying. Like, you wouldn't care. It's hypothetical, but. But you go, you go back and look at the message boards before the cup yeah. final. Folk weren't happy with Stubbs. Still, folk going about how he, he was not to. Can can you so what you were saying there about stubs and blueprints and signing certain types of players and blah blah blah. Despite that, we still found ourselves in a position where he was ninety minutes away from getting the sack because. So actually, is there an argument there to say that that blueprint didn't work? Like it gave us like a, a little period where we were like, oh fuck, actually this is no bad, and we got the the you know the the triple East game, and we got begin for a little bit longer and all that sort of stuff. But actually. In the grand scheme of things, in the last 30 years of Hibs and the time that we've mm-hmm. been supporting them, has there been a gain? Have we gone any further? Like we, like you guys had the, the episode where you talked about Hibs and whether we'd actually progressed in the last five years. The answer was no. Have we actually progressed in the last 30 over a longer period? No. Nah. You're going to get <laughs> even more depressed or angry, John. But I, th- yeah. I think that there's, like, there's more than one reason for it. Uh, and I think that's the that's why the club didn't have a proper look at it. The now, uh, my, it's just my opinion, right? Uh, for, for for as little as that fucking counts, the manager's a problem. Like uh, the the performances this season and the results have been miles of what we need. Miles of it. We're sitting. Was it seventh or eighth? We're in the now. Seventh. Uh, uh, cling, clinging on to our hopes of uh, top sixteen fucking snookers. We could get put our misery on Wednesday if Dundee Aye. beat Rangers. That's it. But is there draw enough for Dundee? Even... Um, I don't think no. No, right. So, so yeah. you know, I, I win, or they need to beat Aberdeen on. Yeah. So, so Dundee, Dundee, right? For all the shambles that Dundee have had over the years, they're kind of a newly promoted club. They've still got it in their own hands to get top six. You don't know. I, I just think it's. It, it's an intolerable situation. I think the managers have long enough with a team. That he has to be accountable for it. Like he's no uh, like a good reason where you could say, come on, it's all right. The thing I would add to that is uh if I can remember my train of thought. 
Could, you know, well, like, sorry, what? No, no. Go for it. What I was going to say was, I, I want to be mindful of the fact that we're talking about people. It's no, we're not talking about a game of championship manager. We're talking about people yeah. with bills and responsibilities and all that sort of stuff. That being said, if we're having a conversation about people uh, not performing well enough and being at risk of losing their job, I said, I can't remember who it was that I said this to, to previously. However, I'm not having a conversation about Nick Montgomery losing his job if we're not looking higher because mm-hmm. how many failures do you have to have appointed managers before questions start getting asked of you? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It is a full review, John. Like, but that's what I'm saying. When I'm, when I'm talking about um, like having a look to see what's what's going wrong, it's not just can you look at Montgomery and Sergio and um, Brian McDermott. You need to look right across the board and say, like, why are we getting it wrong? There, there's folk accountable for this, and you need they, they they all have to come under the spotlight, and and like I said, be accountable for it. Come, what, what are your thoughts there? We'll go to the talking points for for Twitter. Right? We've got I can hundred odds. To, to get through the phone, we'll get through them on the night. But we'll go into them in a in a wee minute. But I'd be interested to get your views on this caller. I don't know if I've got anything to add to what you've said. It's true. It's like that the managers had the whole season. Right? It was only what they come in four games in. It was, that was yeah. his first game. Kilmarnock away was his first game in. That was like in September, like before the Pokes went back. Um, it's it's like. It's fucking ages. He's had plenty of time. After the window, he got the window. He got some players in. We've not got any better. Like we, we. I think we spoke about maybe getting better, but it's almost like wishful thinking or hope, aye, rather than actual fact or actual factual stuff that we're we're looking at. And I, we all kind of got sold on the idea. Yeah, somebody in that's no. Like well, Ken, because we're all back. I've seen it. I've seen it on the message boards and that. Or, sorry, Twitter and that. Get somebody in that knows the Scottish game and all that. Mm-hmm. And we were a little bit like, well, uh, but I did say he needs to come in and coach the players that are there and make the players better. It's not about fucking transfer windows all the time and all that shit. Like you're a coach, coach them, make them better, and and that's not really happening. Yeah, and like you look at it and it, we're scrabbling about maybe getting sixth place and. You know, we spoke about it before, we can maybe get fourth if we get this and that, but fourth fuck, right, so even if we make top six, fourth fuck, and miles away from us. So then you're hoping, well, can we make fifth and get in the Cunt Cup again like we did last year? And, and then that just matches what <laughs> fucking Lee Johnson done. And you go, fuck me, we sacked the last manager for getting us in the Cunt Cup and we're now going to celebrate as a, as a big fucking deal. But actually, if Dundee win on Wednesday night, which I know is like, they'll probably not be allowed to, but... It's done. We're out of misery. It's done, right? We're, we've got to deal with fucking mere games against Livingston, St. Johnston and Ross County and that's the rest of the season. It's, it's fucking crap. It, it's like we've won nine games of season. Nine games of season. Hearts have won double that. Mm-hmm. There, there was Miles a... Mikey Stewart said about him not having a, a, a... What was it? Like a statement win? This season? Well, um, we've only scored three goals once. Aye. And that game. And that was, what was that? The other week against Livingston. Livingston, yeah. aye. Half time it was 3 0 mind and we didn't bother scoring anymore. We just went, fuck it, and that'll do. <laughs> that, it's like, it's that's dull, it's shite, it's boring. Aye. aye. It's like, we, we can't score three goals in a game. And, and that's actually what the problem is because our defence that, or defence, I say our defence, our defensive nature of your team, which includes the midfield and all that as well, mm. we need to score three in a game. Otherwise, we didn't win it. Mm-hmm. And we can't win it because we, we only scored two. So, <laughs> and that's why we so many two two fucking draws. Need to score three because so often we can see two. Because they always Aye. get a corner, so there's a goal. And then Aye. and then it's just another one that'll hit you in the break or something. It's like it's fucking terrible. It's real like nothing's been sorted. Like, like we keep going on about just needs a centre half. Like we need more than that. Like now it's we actually need Organisation, which you didn't need to sign players to create organisation. Yeah, the the <laughs> need a James McPake. <laughs> or, or a coach. Or yep. a coach. Get James, well, James McPake, I think, so a job get him. You can combine no. both. No, John, <laughs> that's plenty. 
Um, right, we'll, we'll we'll hit these uh, talking points. Right, hopefully you've uh, you've got them up on your. your <laughs> That's a great, great. But, well, I want to start on it. So this was the <laughs> was the plan. It's literally as, as Twitter presents them. Right, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll read them as we go through. Right, totally unvetted, so you can there's no selection or anything from us. Um, and I dare say we're not going to get to them all, but because the um, what, what what like the the intensity of them or, or the strength of feeling that came through for the talking points since uh, full time on Saturday. What we're going to do is cover these in extra time. So our subscriber exclusive uh, content will cover the, the ones that we don't get to today. We'll get through as many of the other ones uh, in extra time. And then what we're planning on doing on Thursday, uh, and again, something for our subscribers is um, almost like a, a phone in. We used to do it with sort of quick bang uh, back in the lockdown days. So on Thursday, we're going to host a, a live on YouTube. I guess it will be um, for, for subscribers to tune in. Come on uh, the podcast with us and share your thoughts. Um, and if that works, we'll maybe make that a wee regular thing for uh, subscribers as well. We will put it out for, for everybody to, to kind of watch back after the event uh, as well. And there, and there will be an interview process because... Oh, and a, sl- a selection yeah. process, aye. Because um, yeah, yeah. we have seen with... Um, no, that'll not be all you have to do is a subscriber or subscribers are good, can't say. So that's pretty much yeah. if you if you subscribe, you by default you meet the selection criteria for well, you know, to your opinion. Uh, Aye. Protective of the brand, eh? That's Aye. Protective <laughs> of the brand. Right, what have we got? We've got Kaiser Sosie just had a gift there that says we fed up. Uh, Jeff Ashton says happy clapper head. Two outstanding saves keeps it one one. One defo penalty missed on Emmy, and maybe one of my leader changes the game. Wind brought us down to the level. Uh, normal head, so fucking slow and uns- inspiring for at least 75 minutes. And Jaya for Super Joe, surely Levitt and oh. a wee clown emoji, right? So, Jaya for Joe Newell. Uh, Colin, what did you think of that substitution? Fucking, oh man, that, that was wild, eh? It's like, but Newell wasn't good yesterday. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to say he was good, but he just ca- who, who was capped him anyway? No, did you not know ask? I, I never saw who gave it to Vivek Adam. Maybe two goals for him. I'm not sure who was a captain. But, um, well, Captain was, uh, Cad- <laughs> was doing the captain stuff. He was like giving it the crowd noise and that guy, like, fuck yeah, make some noise and that night. So maybe it moved some because he was shouting and that. But did, did bring, uh, to bring Jay here on, like, what are you doing? Are you taking a piss with us now? It was uh, a. <sighs> it's a. Uh... A, a funny one with Jaya that is persevering, and I feel for Jaya because it's obviously not working for him. The the crowd has no patience for him. We, he's we, not good enough. It's like end. constantly putting somebody on that's not good enough and proving they're not good enough every week. It's like it's not fair on him. It's like it, it's just not fair on him because he, he he's not good enough for it, and, it, and he's getting shown up every time. And and the, the crowd are waiting on it almost. Eh? It's like as soon as he makes a mistake, everybody's like it's, it's, it's all built up. Is it? Shades of James Scott. Aye. Um, I think as much as I've tried to defend Jay, and I completely agree with what you're saying. Like he's on, he's just gonna hide it nothing now when he comes on. Like it's who did we have a situation? I know that the team were booed on, but did we have a player? In fact, was it James Scott that got that booed was James on? James Scott, yeah. Like I think we're approaching that sort of territory if it's not already actually happening with Jay. But are you predicting a hat in, in a non-event game? <laughs> things. Things that don't help his cause, and I, I think this is this is the like is the the supporter. The thing that I don't understand is there was a he gets the ball yesterday, and he's just just over the halfway line in front of the dugouts, and he pings this ball straight at the keeper, and you're thinking, what "Fuck, are you doing?" Like, <laughs> like there's so many, and there's so many there's so many games. This probably goes back to the point I was making before about why does this keep happening. Why do players do that? Is it is it because they're human? Is it because we sign shite players? Like I, I don't know, but you'll you'll remember even like under going as far back as Mowbray, and I'm going on a wee sort of nostalgia trip here. But under Mowbray, there were games where, despite the football being some of the best that we've ever seen at Easter Road, blah blah blah, there were times where we got our arses handed to us by the opposition. Mm-hmm. But we would get our arses handed to us for about eighty five minutes. And then we would start playing football. And you'd think to yourself, well, why were you not doing that for the previous 85 minutes? Why does a professional footballer like Jair, an apparent professional footballer, try and swing an aimless ball in for just inside the halfway line? What was he hoping for? 
Why was it not a better ball? Why did they not try and find a pass? Why? Like, I'm, there's there's so many whys about what happened yesterday and just Hibs in general. It was um, it was a very typical Hibs performance for our season. That like, if you were, uh, if you saw it, you would say that that game could have come at any point this season. That was just probably damning in itself. Uh, right, Stephen Scott said, uh, "Just no very good, weak mindset. Where's the leaders? Uh, deserve bottom six enough." Said. Uh, interesting to hear John's glass half full take. Stephen, Stephen uh, Stephen's ticking uh, all the boxes here for the bingo card. Well <laughs> done. You've got four corners, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, I hope this. I hope my my approach tonight has met your satisfaction. I'm not happy. <laughs> no happy at all. Uh, Jez says, uh, "Look at our results either from the start or end of the January window. This improvement we thought we saw was with green tinted specks on. It doesn't actually exist. Genuinely, don't think Monte is the man." And it's his results against the poorer sides that's finally made my mind up. Colin, you mentioned um, an, the, the improvement bit where we're saying McKinney were basing it not necessarily on evidence, but on, on hope. And I, I don't know, obviously, like we, we talked about form guides and we've been sitting pretty in the form guide for a couple of games you know, over, over six matches. And I think that's as much to do with other teams not being spectacular as us being decent. So it wasn't a completely without foundation. One of the points I made um, earlier on when I was kind of annoying myself about how annoyed I was about Montgomery was that we had when he came in we had this sort of initial lift and then we got progressively worse as the season went on Um, and, and one of the things I, I messaged John you called me out for having an earlier opinion than the one that I shared <laughs> um, was in, in I, I wouldn't say calling you out I'd say reminding you perhaps Aye. But listen, I, I'll openly admit I championed Montgomery when he came in. I was all on board in the early days. Mind you, we're talking about Ken Hoyle. He's been brave. He's playing Whitaker. He's put a 16 year old that fucking works. We beat St. Oh, Martin in the cup. Yeah. We, we were, we, like, I, I was totally sold on it. But I, as always with these things, as we say, as the evidence presents more information and, and you, you start to be able to form a more informed opinion. December, I asked the question whether or not we should be concerned, right? We didn't necessarily go public with that like we were still were um but it was a, like a wee bit devil's advocate a wee bit like i'm not quite at that point yet but should we be but i think we got worse the longer that montgomery was there it got worse and then we get these signings in in january we get an initial lift you're going oh that's good we've got new players and that'll see us right but we're going backwards again and we've got worse and that's not a trend that you want to see um so right anyway like part fry's image uh, says an honest workman like team beat a team of prima donnas. I really want Montgomery to stay, but he is making it hard with his decisions. Jair ahead of Levitt and no handling or fish. These games are the test. Uh, well drilled in defensive opposition and Monty failed again. Um, Colin, you got any comment on that one? No, that I mean, I, I think Levitt's been great, like, but I to bring Jair on ahead of him in, <laughs> in a central area is fucking wild. And I'm I'm not a big fan of fish either, but yeah, Hanlon's the obvious sub there. You might have needed two subs though, then mm-hmm. because then you're going well. Uh, Hanlon for fish, take the chance of bring that here well, Sean. Why not though? Why not make two subs? We'll go five. Yeah. Uh, Liam Reynolds says, uh, "Usually I'm way behind the curve, calling on a manager to go, but I don't see this going anywhere. You can change it now or wait until we throw away another season and do it in November." Um, John. On this one, it was huge booze at the end of the game. Right, Montgomery went round the, the pitch with the players to give the three stands a clap. And not only was he getting roundly booed uh, for doing it, they were very uh, vociferous boos, but there were also folks standing waiting uh, for them to come round just so they could shout abuse as well. It wasn't like a like booing wasn't enough. There was, was, there was there a, gesticulating as well. Is there, that what you're there, telling me? There, there was a, a guy as I was coming out, and uh, you know he was all obviously very frustrated about what he'd seen. But he, he was, I think his words were like, "You're a fucking coward." Uh, no eye contact because he hadn't looked up because uh, like he was shouting about how shit it was, and that was just he wasn't on his own. Like this guy wasn't like the outlier of folks shouting stuff. There was plenty of other folk, and we're normally quite deserved up and. Uh, the the west upper where I sit like so pensioners like like me. Did you put um, in your Reader's Digest for a second to <laughs> holding up my blanket? The thing is though, the thing right. is, though that, with that right, so I get it. Like, you could have easily made icon. So he's not going to hear what we're saying anyway. 
because no. it's just a noise. Yeah. And it, you know what I mean? There was a boy fucking a few a few seats along for me yesterday was like shouting instructions at the players, like telling them how, how we play good football and that. Again, like like well, I think you ever played me, I did recognise you, but like you're obviously better than all the boys. But they can't actually hear you. Like it's just a noise. Aye. Like so easy, just look up then and pretend you're listening to them. Because that, that's an easy fucking thing for a manager to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't make a fucking thing you're doing anyway. I'll just do that clap up, up, up the hand, above the heat thing. He I looks... don't think it's fair to suggest that he's a coward, just to put that uh, human element on things again. Because I think we'd mentioned before, there's definitely an article about it, about a mo- uh, Montgomery overcoming a serious illness to go on and have the career that he did. Uh-huh. But, but, uh, so it's not me calling him a coward. No, 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 no. no, no. Like, I, 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 I'm I, just, I, just uh, re- re- repeating what we shouted. It's just the words that get shouted mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I, I, I got that. Um, the, the point I was making here, right? So Liam said that he's uh, behind the curve of calling a manager to go, but he don't. He doesn't see it going anywhere. When a manager reaches that point, John, where it's so vocal um, and things are so bad, and this isn't the first time it's happened, Montgomery. If you remember the St Mirren debacle back in January, is there a way back for him? Like, can can he turn it around? <laughs> Yes, for one very tiny, uh, very tiny reason. And this maybe is the the glass half full that Stephen was mentioning. Was I've not seen the nicknames yet. The worst I've seen about Nick Montgomery, and didn't he, didn't he, didn't he bring my attention to them because I can <laughs> live happily in this wee bubble was Nick Montgomery. I've not seen anything right. else apart for that. So like when the mm, when the nicknames come bad. out, that's it. It's game over. So he's no... He could turn it, turn it in though. That's a good shout, John. Turn it around, make top six and beat Hearts. Then you'll get a wee bit of credit. Because other than that, he's not going to get. He's got to find a long, long fucking road. Like, and that that's the issue is they credit in the bank. Like we we spoke about after the Ross County draw when when we conceded in you know the last kick yeah. of the ball, the reaction to that showed you this guy's got no. There's no goodwill there from folk, folk who have, and what you're seeing now, folk who have defended him for ages are now gone, fucking done. Um. Alan Duncan said, uh, when did we last score from a corner? 13 corners today, not one threatened to go or even look like anything would come from it. At the other end, it's opposite. Any ball lobbed into our box causes absolute mayhem and it looks like it's going to end up in the back of the net. That's so interesting. I, came I, I quite liked it for a wee while. We were trying different things for corners. We're doing short ones. We're, you know, putting them back or, you know, and I thought, oh, that, this is good. Something good is going to come of this. We've not scored any. Every time somebody post gets across the score, <laughs> you just fucking bang it in the box, man. Maybe she's going to make a mistake like we do. Like, maybe that'll happen. Do we not have a joke about this before? Is like they the, the must work in training, but you go, that's because we're playing against us in training. It's <laughs> 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 a brilliant <laughs> corner. Right? Right? Maybe it's we need... totally a match to the back post. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we right. need... We need to bring in uh, ringers <laughs> to help us with free kick and corner training. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't laugh, right? Stephen Lumsden says, uh, taking out Rangers and Celtic, he's lost one game in eight. That's not sackable for me, but the pressure is bound to be mounting. Uh, what the fucking hell went on with the first goal? It looked like he chopped off and awarded a free kick. That was mental as well. Like the, the first goal, he actually gave us the offside. He brought the ball over so, to the, the side. So, so, I thought, like, I was at the game going, if we blew these fucking balls up, because the, the goalie then threw one off later on, like a burst ball, and it was like, uh-huh. um, it, was, it was not hard enough, I thought, is he wasting time? We've had that one already where we threw the ball, because it was not, but we're selling the, we're selling the balls now, mm-hmm. for goals. Is so I think a, it was because the that's, goal was scored. No, that's not what happened with this one, so, or was it? I try to think whether the they could because I, I thought Rocky Rocky was the one that had the ball ready to take the free kick for the offside, but I thought he knocked it into the centre circle for a kick off. Maybe we need to see it again whether just, they, they rolled moved. it off and, and got we another one. Need to it. Need to it, mate. But I think it, it looked like it was a when you look at it and you go, well, we're selling the match. Well, I see we the the match the the goals scored in the match are being sold by that match warden or whatever they're called. The bonus is to go. Maybe the referee's going to need to get it off. Uh, I was going to ask who it was that were selling them because the, the images that I saw of it yesterday looked like it was the, the SPFL that were selling them off. Well, I don't know. It's, uh, I just assumed it would be the same. Yeah. But uh, that's it. So I don't know. Because at the time I thought, what the fuck? Because it ended up being a flat ball. And then the goalie later on done it with another ball. 
The uh, speaking of like fucking fanning about with boys and everything like that. How frustrating was it to see the time wasting for St. Johnson go unpunished when Marshall gets booked immediately when he did it at, at oh. Ross County? Oh. It fucking it blows my mind that like really it does. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Alan Woodhouse says a terrible performance against a very poor side, but should be beaten comfortably. I was in the Give Montgomery time camp, but my patience is wearing very thin. There's no point going on about a strong bench if we keep bringing Jair on too. Uh, over a number of better options. Um, Raymond Gray says, a team of individuals with little real will to win or stay ahead be a long time until it's fixed with so many under contract. Shambles and don't really deserve top six. Uh, Colin, what do you think that, that point about not really deserving top six? Like, although we could still do it, uh, is it justifiable to say we're a bottom six team this season? Uh, based on results, yeah. Yeah. Like we've, we've won less games than teams that are in the top six. I think we probably spent more time in the bottom six than we have in the, the top yeah. six over but the course of the season. I'll, Maybe we'd, we'd need to check that, but... I don't know about that, but we've won less games than all the teams in the top six. Do you guys know, or just teams. slightly off topic, but do you guys know of any apps or websites out there that allows you to look at league table placings at a given point during the course of the season? Well, funny you should mention that, John. Um, so, no, right. Right, What you can do is if there's a BBC match report for it for the game, they tend to have at the bottom of the uh, the web page as it stood. Now I know this because, uh, because I looked back the um, the St Johnson game when Craig Levine took over and find out how far behind Hibs were, so I could make my point earlier on. That's how I know they were seven behind us, and and are still seven behind us now. Um, so if you need to look at that, so I don't know how how far back that goes, which is why I said no to your answer. Like I, I don't know if it's only for like this seasons, or if you could go back much further than that, and they'd have have them on there. It's so frustrating though. Eh? You look at the league table, right? And I we have one. We've named double figures of wins. Dundee and Six have won more one more game than that. They've got ten. We've got nine. So I have a bottom six. But see if we had one yesterday. We're two points off St Mirren for fifth place. Aye. And. Sitting fairly comfortable, I think Mil- if, even if Dundee go and win at Aberdeen, we just need a point in Motherwell. Or fucking, you know, it, it's like we're miles away from it. Like that, that, that last minute goal is like at, at Motherwell. Well, Dundee must be fucking raging. The Dundee podcast say, like, because they had it doing a lot. But, Aye. and then lose 3 2. But, you know, so you look at it and you go, just chucking stuff away, like St. John's been at home. One of the shittiest teams in the league. But we said that about Levy, Ross County, and St Johnston. Aye. And we're not that much better than them. And Aberdeen, yeah. That's it. That's it. Do you know the, uh, the, the signal for Dundee? Because it could still happen, right? I know that I have any sympathy. I hope it does happen because it means we've got top six. But they, they could end up dropping out the top six just at the, 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 the exact moment where it matters. I've been there pretty much the whole, the whole time, other, other than a wee bit where, where we were sitting in six ahead of them. Yeah. Well, Motherwell could jump them Aye. as well. Like Motherwell's got better goal difference than us and them. Uh, a lot of riding on well, Saturday. Like we have to fucking beat Motherwell. And I just do not know that. If this <laughs> Another must win. I don't know if this team's got it in them. Uh, right, we're, we're out of time, so I'm going to go. There's three more talking points on the screen, uh, and I'll cover them. And the rest of them we'll need to pick up in extra time. Right, so bet is plenty, uh, which is our friend Jake Gapper says uh, a lot of hate for Monty tonight. But I think folk have to remember that we were down to the bare bones most of November, December through the internationals and injury. And since bringing in new players, we've looked much better. Battered Hearts 1-1 and a decent run of results in the process. Is it though? Is it a decent run of results in the process? Like Who who have we beat in that time? Livingston? Well, you know, it's not that but you look at it and you get the... So the form guy came up on sports and we co- tried to cover it the other night. I kept fucking up and the different things were showing. But on the on the sports scene, you go, so we're on a good form guide, right? There was only like one green for a win. It was like draws, win. You know what I mean? It wasn't like yeah. we went on a win and run. We were like... Because we, we've only won fucking nine games of season. It's not, like, that's it. Out of 30 in two games. Aye. And one of them was David Gray. We're not prolific. Aye. It's... But we just didn't win enough games. The form guide just shows that we, we didn't get beat at times. 
that's what that's what it starts to feel like. Uh, have we won? Did, am I right? Have, we've only won two games in a row. We've not won three games in a row. This yeah, season. we've only done three in a row. We've done two in a row once, I think, or maybe twice. That, that's why we are where we are. Aye. Bottom six. Uh, Elston Loon said, is David Gray the issue? Uh, I know he's listed as a first-team coach, which I reckon would include defensive coaching. He's worked with a few managers now where defence has been our issue and defence remains the issue. Um, I think, for for amusement's sake, if nothing else, <laughs> David Gray might be the answer. Because the evidence that I've got for that is he went to Petodre with a Hibs team and won, which very few managers have done in the last... 10 years, 10, 15 years. With a 4 4 2 as well, which is apparently the hardest formation to win with. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's outdated. It's, it's dinosaurs, isn't it? Um, uh, I think uh, taking the point seriously, though, uh, we were talking there about uh, Montgomery, Kensal, etc., like looking at looking at things across the board because there's like, how do we move forward? There needs to be a proper a proper approach, a proper review to, to understand how, how to do that. And David Gray might find himself part of that. Um, aye, it's, and it's hard because we don't know what David Gray does in, in terms of coaching. I'm sure I heard that he was a set piece coach, but uh, you know how accurate is that information? I don't know. Um, so who knows? But I go back to what I was saying earlier. I think right now everybody at the club that's involved in the performances of the first team needs to be under the microscope. If um, what if the chat for Bill Foley and you know not accepting mediocrity and blah 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 is, is true and wanting to be best of the rest then aye everyone needs to be up in there for review uh, and last one uh, for this evening goes to Robert Cherry who said he, he was hoping it would work for Monte seems a nice guy but not up to the job back to the drawing board again make it right this time um, that's going to be the biggest thing is making sure the next appointment is um, wow, one that actually sort of fits and, and then making sure that the environment that they come into is one that uh, enables that success Right, that's us out of time. Thanks so much for sending in your talking points. Uh, we've got through a handful of the ones that we, we could have done. Like I said, we will take that on to extra time, uh, which we'll record. Would you like that tomorrow night? It goes out on Tuesday. Anyway, right, so if you're a subscriber, you get it on, on, a, on a Tuesday. Um, so we'll cover the, as many of the rest of them as we can. We probably still won't get through them all. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on in the episode, on Thursday, when we normally record Week at Hibs, we're going to open that up as a subscriber phone-in. So if you want to get involved with that, you can reach out to us on Twitter or uh, you can also email us, which is longbangers at gmail.com um, and we'll get back in touch with, with the arrangements. Um, this will be open, if we can figure it out, we'll be open to YouTube members uh, and subscribers and that's folk who subscribe on Patreon or on Hubwave. So if you do want to get involved, make sure you've got a, an active subscription as well because we, we, we will... Uh, limit it to that as because it is normally a subscriber exclusive episode. Um, thanks very much for your time listening, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, I put a super would be next week, hopefully, to talk about a win against Motherwell. Eh? Who knows? Right, thanks, and we'll see you next time. I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no